Welcome to From the Cave with Saladin Ellis, where we step beyond the shadows and surface level perceptions to discuss and understand the deeper narrative shaping our reality. We dive into current affairs, culture, and politics, seeing the story under the story. Now, from what I understand the last few days, when it comes to Israel, Biden took a call from Netanyahu and said, we need to protect the civilians or else, right? Now, we still have no idea what or else is, but let's take a, a, a listen to Secretary of State Blinken cover up for Biden. Secretary of State Blinken, he is in Brussels. Let's listen in and we'll come back to that. And I made clear then the commitment of the United States to Israel's security and to ensuring that October 7th could never happen again. I also underscored Israel's moral, strategic, and legal requirements to protect civilians and provide humanitarian assistance to those who needed it. Now, of course, what happened after October 7th could have ended immediately if Hamas had stopped hiding behind civilians, released the hostages, and put down weapons. But Israel is not Hamas. Israel is Hamas. Just stop fighting. We understand you're in an open air prison. We understand that half your population didn't even vote during the last election because they were under the age. But put down your weapons. Hamas, a terrorist organization. And democracies place the highest value on human life every human life. As has been said, whoever saves a life saves the entire world. That's our strength. It's what distinguishes us from terrorists like Hamas. If we lose that reverence for human life, we risk becoming indistinguishable from those we confront. Here's the current reality in Gaza. Despite important steps that Israel has taken to allow assistance into Gaza, the results on the ground are woefully insufficient and unacceptable. A hundred percent of the population in Gaza knows acute levels of food insecurity. A hundred percent of the population is in need of humanitarian assistance. This is where it's getting weird because they understand exactly what's happening, but it's like, they're like, hey, like, okay, we with you, but like, hurry this, hurry this up, like, hurry this shit up. Like, every life matter. Like, even the Palestinian lives. So if it really is this weird thing where they're like, every, every child matters, every life matters, but, but, and it's that but that's getting people, that's getting people fucked up. And those working heroically to provide that assistance are doing so in great peril to their own lives. This week's horrific attack on the World Central Kitchen was not the first such incident. It must be the last. President Biden spoke a short while ago with Prime Minister Netanyahu. They called it an attack. They said an attack on the World Health Kitchen. Not an accident, not a mistake, not a, a collateral damage. That's big. Yeah. The leaders discussed the situation in Gaza. The president emphasized that the strikes on humanitarian workers and the overall humanitarian situation are unacceptable. He made clear the need for Israel to announce a series of specific, concrete, and measurable steps to address civilian harm, humanitarian uh, suffering, and the safety of aid workers. He made clear that U.S. policy with respect to Gaza will be determined by our assessment of Israel's immediate action on these steps. He underscored as well that an immediate ceasefire is essential to stabilize and improve the humanitarian situation and protect innocent civilians. And he urged Prime Minister Netanyahu to empower his negotiators to conclude a deal without delay to bring the hostages home. The two leaders also discussed public Iranian threats against Israel and the Israeli people. President Biden reaffirmed the United States' strong support for Israel in the face of these threats and our commitment to Israel's security. Right now, there is no higher priority in Gaza 
and protecting civilians, surging humanitarian assistance. And it's not true. There's a higher priority for Israel to defeat Hamas, even though they have no idea how many Hamas fighters are left, how many Hamas fighters they've killed to this day. They have no idea. And ensuring the security of those who provide it. Israel must meet this moment. We've been listening we to the Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, at NATO headquarters on the 75th anniversary of the founding of the organization. He's live for, in uh, Brussels, Belgium. Some significant remarks when it comes to the conflict in Gaza. The Secretary of State saying that he has communicated to Israeli officials not only the U.S.'s commitment to Israel and its war against Hamas, but also the moral obligation that Israel has to protect civilians and aid workers in the Gaza Strip. He specifically said, and I quote, if we lose reverence for human life, we become indistinguishable from them, from Hamas terrorists. He described the uh, efforts so far by Israel since October 7th to protect civilians and humanitarian. See, what's weird is, it's this weird structure where the, the U.S. somehow has this alleged, this allegiance to Israel and it's causing them to know exactly what they're doing. But see, you can't say every life matter and then know that innocent lives are being taken and still say, you guys are pushing up against that line like you're almost at that red line. No, they're there. They're at the red line. They're, they're committing a genocide. The international courts have said that Israel is committing a genocide. But the U.S. is this weird thing, too, because Israel is single-handedly taking down the U.N. We have all the, you have the U.N. sanctioning uh, Iran and all these other things, and they'll sanction China, whoever. But the U.S. is single-handedly saying, uh, what the U.N. say don't matter. So what happens when somebody else that we don't like is doing something, and then the U.N. goes and says, well, they're, they're committing some type of genocide. They're going to say, well... Israel wasn't like, uh, who believes in the UN? Who needs them anyway? So what happens to the UN after this? They almost will never have the same power structure and, and grass, right? It won't hit the same when, when the UN says something, because obviously the US doesn't care unless uh, they agree with it. Carrying aid workers as woefully inadequate. And he laid out what we just got a readout from the call that President Biden had with the prime minister. Uh, that the United States would consider its approach to Israel based on concrete steps to change uh, the way that Israel's and aid work. That's right. They're expecting data from Israel, which is clear. He said that they need to have concrete, measurable steps to address harm to civilians, civilian suffering, and also to aid workers. And he said that U.S. Uh, aid to Gaza uh, may be determined by those steps. That's so we're saying, hey, Israel, we need you to investigate yourself and tell us what you're doing wrong or right. No, there needs to be a third party investigation. Israel it has not been forthcoming and it's been proven in different scenarios that Israel has not been forthcoming and telling the truth on what they've struck in and what they haven't. When they hit civilians, they say, oh, it's Hamas. And then Hamas says yes, and then they're lying. And sometimes they accept Hamas numbers about certain things, but then Hamas give other things about Israel. And they're like, no, no, you can't trust those numbers. It's, it's, it's really weird. It's really weird. That's essentially what he said. And this is really significant. Because it comes on the heel of thinking about being open to putting... conditions like aid to Israel, which is really... Isn't that crazy? It's 2024. Anybody that we're selling weapons and giving billions of dollars to should have a goddamn uh, uh, set of rules and regulation to live by. How are, how as American people, are we okay with our country, our government giving anybody any type of military weapons, military aid and say, hey, no, just, we trust you. We trust you. These people aren't, aren't kings and queens. They rotate. So even if there is somebody in power that we trust and we just give them the aid, we're not, we're not ever thinking that they're going to leave power and that a new guy can come in. Like, we're not. Even as we're hearing from the policy hasn't changed, this is signal.
calling a potential policy change is big. Absolutely. It, notably, the timing of the, the apparent accident coming. Oh, the U.S. announced this enormous deal, $18 billion to sell 15 fighter reel. Now being, is this rhetoric that actually moves the needle, or do there have to be conditions order Prime Minister Netanyahu and some of the other Israeli officials to carry out significant change. $18 billion. That's a lot of money. How many people will be mad if Biden say, hey, we can't sell them that? We're selling them $18 billion worth of, <laughs> worth of fighter jets. People that haven't done what we said with the missiles we've given them. In the way that they've been conducting the war. Uh, retired uh, Colonel Cedric Layton, give us some perspective. Uh, Colonel Layton, from you heard from the Secretary, it is a noticeable shift saying that, that the policy toward Israel will change. To, uh, On Israel. The way that Israel conducts operations in God. Absolutely. Here is conditioning the aid on Israeli conduct. going forward I uh, and uh, the conduct of Israeli operations has not met U.S. standards as if the you know, defense and the administration looking at changing the policy use these weapons against civilian targets you cannot use these weapons again it might be happening here uh, Whether or not it does, of course, we're doing is, business course. with a country that we got to say, hey, you guys cannot shoot humanitarian workers with these. It might be that Christmas movie when a kid, when a father like, you'll shoot your eye out, kid. You'll shoot your eye out. But in this case, the kid has shot his eye out eight or nine times at this point. And we're still pretending, well, this time is different. Well, this time you shot your eye out eight times. I want to know step by step what you're going to do to prevent from getting your eye shot out and prevent from shooting anybody else. And they like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just give me, yeah, yeah, whatever you say. Yeah, yeah. Biden's, he's in a position right now where it's getting political and he know he can't step on the stage with Trump and still has this, still have this issue going on because he will get crucified. Days probably, but didn't you mention the F-15s uh, to Israel? That's the they do. That's a much more immediate thing. It's going to be interesting to see whether or not that delivery is stopped uh, before uh, they actually are. Uh, put into Israeli airplanes uh, for uh, potential use, and that's that's going to be a significant thing. Two things that the Israelis, uh, that the U.S. is worried about with Israel. One of them is the immediate conduct in Gaza. The second thing is using Israel as a buffer against Iran, and that is going to be uh, kind of the balancing act that Israel has to deal with at this point. Let's listen in to Admiral Kirby. At this point, we're going to have to back down when Iran, when Iran. Uh, respond basically we're gonna have to let them take a couple shots at israel little pop pop shots and just act like we don't see it fair is fair overall humanitarian situation in Ghana are unacceptable he made clear the need for israel to announce and to implement a series of specific concrete and clear that U.S. with respect to will be determined by our assessment of Israel's immediate action on this. He underscored that an immediate ceasefire is essential to stabilize and improve the humanitarian situation and to protect innocent civilians. And he urged the prime minister to empower his negotiators to conclude a deal without delay to bring the hostages home. The two leaders also discussed public Iranian threats against Israel and the Israeli people. President Biden made clear that the United States strongly supports Israel in the face of those threats. That's all I have. Um, Admiral, you're not specifying what concrete steps Israel must take exactly. I, I, I gave you some uh, uh, 
broad sense of it. We want to see crossings opened up. We want to see more trucks getting in, particularly from Jordan. Um, we want to see tangible steps at mitigation. What they basically told Israel was get this media, this media coverage under control. They told Israel, get this PR under control. You can do what you want to do, but this, this the media is, is crucifying us because they have enough already. People are died. Over 30,000 people have died in, 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 in Gaza. We're saying there better not be no more. There's been enough. It makes me angry. It, 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 I just can't even. I I just can't even get it out. Kids are dying over there, and and Biden is pretending like it's just. They just decided not to show for a meeting. Like it, it's just. It, to humanitarian aid workers, I see that they have, uh, uh, that they have forward on proper steps to deconflict as they move around. That the inflow. Uh, is viable. That's the language we were talking about. You say the uh, same sort of stuff. Telling us how exactly you will measure the measurable steps. What I said was we're going to, based on the our assessment of the way the uh, modifies their behavior, uh, modifies their policy and decision-making process. First of all, let's see what they say they're going to do. And then and let's at a watch certain and see point, when do we take execute. it out of their hands? When do we take it out of Israel's hands and say, we've seen enough 30 thousand plus people killed. It's more than a preview. It's more than a, and then a snippet. It's more than a sample. They don't care about the Palestinians, whatever it is. Maybe, okay, it's justified. Well, the Palestinians want to wipe the Jewish people off the face of the fucking earth. Okay, well, so then I get it. The Jewish people wants to wipe them off. But what does that have to do with us? What does that have to do with the West supporting them? They're not just, the same thing is happening in Russia and the Ukraine. It would be over. The war would be over and no more people would be dying. Like, that's a whole different story. But Israel has done enough. Like, this is getting insane that we're still saying give Israel a chance, give them a chance. And then it's making people feel like, oh, well, you're anti Semite. Like, because they're confusing Jewish uh, people with the Jewish state of Israel. It's completely different. You don't want to get ahead of them. To what I don't want to have on, on what they will base our policy decisions based on an assessment of how they execute. So we're giving them billions of dollars, but we're not setting the rules of engagement. We're going to follow their lead. The big brother is going to follow the little brother lead. When has that worked out for anybody? Anybody that's ever had an older, a younger sibling, and you're the older sibling or whatever, you your parents put you in charge and say, "Hey, I'm leaving. You're the big brother." And the little brother do something and the parents come home and say, what the hell are you doing? And the, and the big brother says, well, I only did it because he was doing it. Since when did that work? We are the country that's been here. We are the big brother. We've been through the wars and they keep using that whole, oh, well, what'd you guys do after 9-11? And we over-re-fucking-acted. We overreacted. Hindsight is twenty twenty. You can't do the same thing. We should have never uh, reacted like that. Oh, they got weapons of mass destruction and we're going over there. That was a lie. So they're taking a lie and we all know it's a lie. And then asking us, well, what would you guys do? We should have never went into Iraq, Afghanistan. None of them we should have been in. To their policy decisions. And you're not talking about what potential U.S. agents. How low? Well, humanitarian assistance getting in, absent any movement on. 
Uh, ceasefire that will allow. Let's stop this. Listen, man. Let's summarize that. Let's step out of the game. Biden is kissing Israel's ass. And he's been singing their praises for so long that now he's forced a man the hell up and say, I made a mistake. This is going overboard. Israel has the right to defend themselves. They have the right to attack anybody who's attacking them. But we're not fucking savages. We are civilized beings. We understand our power. We understand what is it. I don't give a fuck if, if, a, if a gang of rats just come from under the sewer and attack my house. I cannot then the next day blow my fucking house up despite my neighbors and tell them, well, the, they attacked me. So if we can't do that to fucking rodents. We damn sure can't do it to human lives. This is why the aliens don't come down and talk to us. We're supposed to be exploring uh, Mars and outer space with Elon and other billionaires. And we still got basic fucking problems down here on Earth. Like, don't kill each other. Don't commit mass genocide. Hey, the people that had a genocide that was uh, a genocide that was put on your people. Don't don't didn't go do it. Like literally history repeats itself. And this time the victim is the victimizer. And a lot of times that happens when you're victimized, you become the victimizer. We see it all the time from sexual predators and things like that. Oh, they were touched as little kids and they started touching people. Oh, they seen this and they seen their parents and uh, domestic violence. Oh, what? They started domestic violence. So, oh, the Jewish people been hearing about this Holocaust and this and how normal it is. And hey, well, we went through it. They got to go through it. Sure. But not with our help, not with the American tax. Biden is getting so old, I don't think people, these, these leaders really respect him. He barely has respect in America. And now you're sitting there, it's like, once again, it's like a kid. You're saying, hey, you're going to get in trouble. You keep doing that. Hey, stop. Hey, what I tell you? And did you just, they like, uh-huh, uh-huh, yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, yes, sir. And you just give them whatever the hell they want. Oh, you want punishment? And then, can I go outside? And now they can go outside. It's ridiculous. This is the year I think black people especially will wake up from the Democratic Party. The Republican Party ain't that much better. But at least if they say they're going to do some shit, a lot of times they do it right or wrong. Where's that in the Democratic community? After the elections won and they got everything, then everything becomes, whoa, 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 we can't do this. We tried. We were going to do this. They're not even a We have an immigration problem here and Biden is sending billions of dollars out. Let's rise up, people. Let's wake up. Let's leave.